guiding light. Today I want to deal with you with an issue that I changed the message this morning, very early. I was going to do something different, and the Lord put something else on my heart when I asked him, Lord, is there something else you'd like for me to do? And this came to mind to try to wake you up from the ignorance that we have been blinded by. Something that even Brother Hayes said, said a minute ago, there's nothing God can't do. And to give you a key so you can begin to apply in your life this key to get God to operate for you. It's a word he said to me on Friday night that I did not know that I would do for you today because I had another plan. But on Saturday night, a little more than 24 hours after I heard that word, he said, you do this. I want you to become aware of the things that you see with your eyes are things that are not your reality. What you see with your eyes is a perception that has been given to you, not by God, but by the world. We see things through a glass darkly, and God has given us the ability to see things more clearly through the knowledge of his word. I am going to speak from a message title here today, focusing on reality and not the illusion. Causing you to focus on the reality of life and not the illusion of life. See, there are illusions that we follow. All of us, from the day that we are born, we are born into a world that is famous for making illusions. Making us see one thing when there is actually something else going on. How many of you ever been in a situation when you bought something and once you bought it, you got it home, you found out what you thought you had is not exactly what you thought you had. You got something thinking it would do a certain thing, but when you got home, it wouldn't do what you thought it would do. And maybe you took it back. Uh, we've made some serious mistakes like that. Sometimes we have thought a person in our life we got a perception they're the right thing for us. And then we go down a little road with them and we find out, where did you come from? You're not what I thought I was getting. We have a perception based upon sometimes things that make us think a thing is a certain way. And it's not really that way when we get it. I want to cause you to focus on reality today and not the illusion, and not the deception of what we see with these eyes. I'm going to tell you very clearly right now so you know where I'm going, and you'll know, okay, he's crazy when I say it. This world and everything that you see in it is an illusion. This is not the real world. You are living in a fantasy world. This is not reality. You ever done something sometime when you believe in your healing and the folks say you in denial, but yet you go on and believe in your healing and then you get your healing and they don't remind you then that you were in denial when you got healed. You see, what you were doing was confessing your reality and they were confessing the illusion that they had been deceived into believing. We just had folk that stood up in here that were cancer survivors. I want you to understand, the world gives you the illusion that if you got cancer, you're gonna die. But we just proved the fact that there are people that go beyond the illusion of death and they have life. I'm about to tell you there's an illusion that's going on in this world today that has you all confused, that make you think you are a loser. You are not a loser. It is an illusion that you are, an, that you are a loser. 
I'm going to show you in a minute. I'm going to show you that God didn't create you to be a loser. God created you to be the head and not the tail. The fact if you're on the bottom, you're living an illusion. And if you realize who you really are, you can walk in your reality of who God says. If God ever says a thing, it's going to come to pass. There is nothing that God has ever said that did not happen. And some of the things that God has spoken over your life because you're living in an illusion, you don't allow it to happen because every time God try to take you up, somebody else tell you you can't do it and you live in that illusionary world of believing, I can't do this. Because you listen to the wrong folk. Now let me show you about your listening and what has got you in this damaged state. In Genesis, the third chapter. Oh, some of y'all say, there you go again. Going back to the beginning of mankind's problems. Well, this is what it is, but you need to hear the truth. And I got to get, I got to break the yoke that the devil has placed on many of you all in this room so that you can be free. Now it says this, now follow me for a moment. We're going to focus on the reality and not the deception and the illusion. The serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, he said something. And I want you to understand the way the deception of the devil is through the words that he speaks. Why does the devil speak evil to you? Because he learned from God. If God speaks, he speaks good to you. So therefore, he will speak evil so that you cannot hear the good. Now, watch what the devil did. What did I just say? The devil is always talking, talking loud and saying nothing. But what have we learned a few weeks ago? That God also speaks. He always speaks, though a man may not perceive it. God has been talking to you, and so has the devil. And unfortunately, most of us believe the devil. Watch what happened. God created the universe and everything that's in it. And then when Satan started talking, he said something too. He said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree? In the garden. Notice he attacks what God says by saying what he said. He's about to create an illusion. Now follow me. Did not God create the entire universe? How did he do it, y'all? He spoke it. Now watch the devil speak something else. The reality is what God did. The illusion is what Satan does. Now follow me carefully. It's by spoken words that the world came into existence. And it's also by spoken words that hell came into existence. Words. He said to the woman, you shall not, he said, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree. Notice it's words being spoken. Notice the third thing. And the woman said to the serpent, now, the woman says something, the power of the words to create an illusion. That's how magicians fool you. They create deception and illusion by misdirection with the words that they speak. So, and the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. She says this, but of the tree. That is in the, the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you not, shall you touch it, lest you die. Now she added that part. We know that. But that's quite all right. She said something. Now watch what happens here. Then the serpent said, notice the setting again. There is setting. The universe was created by God setting, right? Got what I'm saying? And God said. So he said it effectively. You ain't got that. He said it. <laughs> so God said it, let there be light, and there was light. So it's based upon, I'm emphasizing what has been said. And so the serpent said, and the woman said, and the serpent said, you will not surely die. For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open. Notice this now, that God knows that the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will see an illusion. You say, I don't see that there. But I'm reading in between the lines to tell you what you're going to see. You're going to start seeing things that are not the way that it really is. 
You are going to see the world from a different point of view, not the point of view that God set up for you. Guiding light, I'm here to remove the blinders off your eyes because many of you, and including myself, we have seen things from the perspective of a human being or from the perspective of Satan, but we are lax to be able to see things from the eyes of God. We must begin to change our perspective so that we no longer look at the illusion that the devil has given us and see the reality that God has commanded over us. We spend too much time looking at things that are illusions that are of this world and this world is not our home. We don't belong here. We've got to understand God has given us spiritual eyes to see things that other folk can't see. And I'm talking about God and light because you've got enough word in you to be able to see some things now. You do have this. Now follow me. He says, Satan says, for God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be open. Absolutely truth. God doesn't want us to see certain things. But Satan wants us to see every evil thing, and he does. And he said, you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. You will then be able to see good and evil. Now watch verse 6. So when the woman saw, again seeing through her perception, that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, she saw it, and she saw it, she saw the illusion when God said, this ain't what you're supposed to eat. She heard what the devil said, and she saw what the devil said. She saw the illusion and deception that the devil was making. Are you following me? And she saw that a tree that God said you should not eat of was a tree that was pleasant to the eyes and desirable to make one wise. And she took it and she ate. She gave some to her husband with her, and he ate. I want you to know that reality is the word of God we receive and not the world we perceive. Follow me on this. Reality is the word of God we receive, not the world we perceive. We've got to stop looking at stuff through these eyes. We've got to start looking at things through the perspective and the eyes of God. Too many of us are letting what the world tells us be our definition of who we are. I will not be defined by this world. I will be defined by what God says. And every one of you all has got to learn to break the yoke of the illusion that this world really makes a difference in your life. This world cannot hold you down. This world cannot control you. You are children of Almighty God. You're suffering on a delusion that you just like everybody else. Do you not know that you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, that you have been called of God to declare forth his praises, and yet the world has got you backed up saying the only place I'm supposed to worship, the only place I'm supposed to glorify God is inside four walls of a church that's a lie that's an illusion that the devil has placed on you to cause you to be delusionary that you think that your God don't work outside this church but you need to know that God who created the universe is more than just God and God in life he's God out on your job he's God in the hospital he's God in the schoolroom. he's God on the football field also and just because we don't want to say he's there, he is still there. If we went to the highest mountain, he'd be there. If we went to the lowest depth, he'd be there. Wherever we go, our God is. But the devil makes us think God ain't there with an illusion in our mind. Reality is God. All this stuff that we see here is not a reality. This is an illusion, folk. I know it's hard for you to get it. When the Lord first spoke to me, I said, what? This ain't real? My word is real. And everything that you see was made by my word. And what has been hijacked in your mind is to believe that all this stuff has rule over you. Do you not know I put my word in you? I gave you the authority. I said you could speak to the mountain. 
and the mountain would be moved. Why? Not because of you, but because my word and who I am inside of you. You are living under an illusion that you have no authority when I have given you all authority because I got it when I went to the grave, stole the keys from the devil, set the captive free, and I got it, and I said, now you go. Folks, y'all not understanding what I'm saying. Because it's hard for you to break through your, your illusion of that you are a limited person. You are not limited. The Bible said to you, and we say it all the time, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. And we lie to ourselves because we have an illusion to say, well, I can't be healed of cancer. I can't be the top of my job. I can't be making straight A's. I can't do this because we believe the deception of the devil who says we just human like everybody else. Let me tell you a deception you got. You look at me and you say, that's Jim Long. Uh-uh. This is an illusion. Do you not know that this ain't Jim Long what you see with your eyes? Do you not know that God created Jim Low and blew life into him by his spirit? What you're looking at is an outside shell giving you the illusion that the shell is living. Better follow me. Take the spirit out the shell and the shell can't move. What you're looking at is an illusion of who you think Jim Lowe is. Do you hear me clearly? This is not Jim Lowe. This is a shell that Jim Lowe is inside of. Furthermore, understand that if you take the shell away from Jim Lowe, guess what? Jim Lowe is still alive. Why? Because God spoke. And everything God speaks is still here to the day. If God knew me before he formed me in the womb, then you need to understand when he formed me in the womb and I came out into the world, if I was living before I got in the womb and he formed me for this body, it's an illusion for me to think that when this body lay down, that I ain't still alive. Okay, now I'm taking you off to some deep places right now. Y'all understand what I'm But it's not God. Did he not say, before I formed you, I knew you. Wait a minute now. Before he formed me, he knew me. Then it meant before I ever got this body, I was alive. And if I was alive before I got it, why am I living under the delusion that if I lose it, I'm dead? Ooh, you better hear this and go kind of deep. I need you to understand that we have this illusion with stuff where we see with eyes and we think that's what's real. You better understand before God created time and space, he said he knew me. So before there was ever time, I was with God. And when God created time, he had me in his mind. I was always on his mind. And then in the course of time, he decided he would form a body so that he who had me in his mind could bring me now into a form. And he put me on the earth. Now, I was living before I got in this form. Now, you need to understand, since I was living before I got in this form, when this form drops and falls, I'm still living. And the world gives us an illusion and puts a heavy delusion on us. They dead. They dead as a doorknob. Not so. Doorknob never had the breath of God breathed inside of it. I'm different than a doorknob. I'm not ever going to be dead as a doorknob because God, I heard the word that God breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life. And when God breathed life, life cannot be broken, cannot be taken. So now why am I getting upset when the illusion of what this reality is scares me? You know why? Because I'm missing something. I'm missing something. Hebrews 11, 1 say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I've got to learn, I've got to stop looking at stuff 
and basing my reality upon what I see and recognize that what I see is the illusion. It's the stuff I don't see that's real. Notice, faith is the substance, the solidarity of things hoped for come from within my mind and the evidence, it is a factual thing of what I can't see. And most of us are stuck by what we see. If we see a thing, we believe it. And sometimes we believe a thing and then we see it. But I'll tell you something, it ain't based upon me, it ain't based upon what I think, it ain't based upon what I feel, it's based upon one undeniable reality that God is God and whatever God says, that's what becomes real. Now, what becomes real? He says this, Hebrews 11, 3. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the what? The spoken word of God. I want you to understand. How did the worlds get framed? How did they get here, y'all? Spoken word of God. So then God spoke this thing into existence. What did Satan do? Satan spoke a contrary world into existence. And guess who helped him do it? We did. Guess who helps Satan still reign in this world? We do. By the words we speak. What we have to understand is that we've got to start countermanding what Satan says over our life. We got to start countermanding when Satan says something negative. We got to start countermanding with the word of God. We got to start speaking the word of God over our children. Teachers might say, I don't know what's wrong with Johnny, but Johnny can't do too well. We trying to put him in remedial class. You got to start speaking another word and say, my child is a child of God. I'm going to speak over him. Son, you might be a little slow right now, but you know what? You're going to get better. Tomorrow, you're going to be better than what you were today. And the next day, you're going to be better. We got to learn how to start speaking the right words over our children. We got to learn how to start speaking the right words over our families, right words over our husbands, right words over our wives. Because God has shown us that everything, notice this, that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Everything that you see right now came from something that was invisible. What was it? It was the word of God. And understand, God has given us authority so that we can also speak to our world and the illusions that we keep adding by saying, I can't, I cannot, we carry on what the devil is trying to cause us to lose. We got to shut our fat mouths talking negative talk always complaining, always griping, because what we're doing, we're strengthening the illusion that we are stuck and limited to this world. We are children of God, not of this world. We must take the authority that God has given us as his children and begin to command things to be the way the kingdom of God says it should be. Come on, I need y'all to get what's saying because I don't, it don't seem like I'm connecting here. So you don't understand the illusion. It ain't real. Kill me. I'll get up. Well, we won't see you. That's because you're looking at the illusion. You ask me. Come on, Bishop. You're you in denial. Ask Joshua about walls that were so big that nobody could get into it? Ask him about what the, the illusion is. The illusion said the walls of Jericho were shut up and couldn't nobody come or go in. They were so high, they couldn't break them down. But see, Joshua saw something entirely different. He had a different perspective. He had a perspective from the word of God, not from a horizontal with what he saw with these eyes, but what we saw with the eyes of faith. Y'all been letting the devil build walls around your life, keeping you from being what God created you to be, because you think they can't take these walls down. You got to hear God. And ask Joshua, what happened to them walls? Joshua did a stupid thing. Walked around them for seven days. 
on the seventh day, walked around them seven. Stupid thing. If, it, if we'd been there, wouldn't we have told y'all, Joshua, you need to get you some battering rams. You need to get you some catapults. We got to get us some arrows. We got to train the soldiers so they can carry. We got to get some ropes so we can climb over this wall and do all that. Joshua said, no, you speak in illusionary language. I got a reality language. I got a reality language that say all I got to do is make one shout. And you see, why, why the shout work? Because I heard that God said, let there be with the words of his mouth. And everything that is seen came into the existence by the spoken word of God. When I learn who I really am as a child of God, I take the spoken word of God and the authority that he's given to me. And I speak to the walls and I shout and the walls come down. Well, that was good enough for Joshua, but that ain't good enough for me. Uh-uh. Understand what Jesus said? Jesus said, if you got faith as a mustard seed, you can speak to a mountain and a mountain will get up and move to the other side and go off into a sea. You've been living under a delusion and an illusion that you ain't got no power. He said, no good thing does he withhold from those who love him and from his children. You got to understand, you got to change your mindset. You've been living under the illusion that this world got you blocked. This world ain't your home. Do you not understand who you are? Did not Jesus say, by his word, the works that I have done, you shall do even greater works. Why? Because I go to the Father. And what y'all saying? Well, you know, you can't do this and you can't do this. Well, how come we ain't seen it happen? Because, see, there's one block that we got right here. It's in Romans 10, 17. So then faith, which can knock down walls, faith, which can break barriers, comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, notice that the hearing and hearing, the comma don't mean that's where the comma went in the first place. See, faith comes by hearing and hearing. See, by hearing and hearing. For you folks that say, there go Bishop over the same thing again. But I'm going to tell you what God said is by hearing and hearing. Hearing and hearing. Hearing and hearing. Hearing and hearing. What, but the brother just went over the same word again. What did we talk about? What God can do, what God can do, what God can do. I'm saying, he's going to repeat that again. Say, remember that. That's all it is. It comes by hearing and hearing. And we got the illusion that I got it. The first time. Y'all ever thought you had something the first time? But then about the tenth time you've been through it, you say, oh, oh Jesus, where'd that come from? <laughs> Faith cometh by hearing and hearing. So uh, sooner or later, I'm going to get the boldness to tell y'all that Bishop repeat the same thing. I'm going to say, doggone right. I keep repeating the same thing till I get it in my mind until you get it in your mind. We have to understand the power that God has given us so that by faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what's that mean for us? Therefore, we read this in 2 Corinthians 4, 16. We do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. Don't you worry about yourself dying. Don't you worry about yourself getting old. Because where are you going to? I'm just getting one more day closer to the Lord. It says, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Day by day, y'all. We don't lose heart. See, the devil wins over you by your lack of faith and you losing heart. I can't run no business. I can't, I can't, I can't get over this sickness. You know, I've been dealing with this thing for a long time. It don't look like I, that's the illusion. It's the illusion. It's not our reality. The world we see is a deception and illusion. From what we see, we should draw no conclusions. I'm going to repeat that one more time. The world we see is a deception and an illusion. From what we see, we should draw no conclusions. Look at my words up there. You see... This is all a deception. Do you not know that this world is only here for a minute? It's a deception. It's an illusion. It's making you think you're confined to it. I remember in Ephesians first chapter, it said we are now seated in heaven with God. I need to realize who I dead gummit am and stop letting folk tell me who I am. 
Let God tell me. He has given me every spiritual blessing with Christ Jesus in the heavens. I got to get that through my head and stop letting this world define me by my skin color, define me by my education, define me by my financial background, define me by my mama and daddy. Don't nobody have a right to define me except God, the one who created me. And you people, I said you people, got to stop letting the world, letting the world define who you are. You better realize, I said you were earlier, you are a royal priest of the holy nation. Amen. Why can't you get that through your head? <laughs> you know, the other day, when this, uh, I was talking to somebody yesterday, and they were talking about the prophetic word, talking about we're going to die before we, if we don't vote the way somebody say vote. Somebody say, said to me, Bishop, what did you say? I said, I didn't say nothing. You let them lie on God like that? Then that hurt my heart. But I was thinking to myself, my congregation told me to stop saying so much. <laughs> they don't like me always trying to, trying to correct everybody. So I sat real quiet. I didn't say nothing. Because they said, we always got to defend you, Bishop. But y'all got to get one thing through your head. I'm struggling with people who lie on God. I'm struggling with people who misdirect when God is the solution to every problem. And we think we're going to resolve our racial problem without God. That ain't going to work. We think we're going to solve our marital problems without God. That ain't going to work. We think we're going to solve poverty without God. That ain't going to work. Somebody got to return us back to the reality that all this stuff is an illusion and that when the church finally rises up and realize who we are in Christ Jesus, we take back what the devil stole from us. We got to get Jesus back on the throne. We got to get him in the throne rooms of our heart. He's got to be here. I got to realize, devil, you can't take my life. And even if you do take my life, I'm still going to live. You got no victory over me. I am more than a conqueror because of Christ Jesus and what he has done for me. I got to get this inside of my mind so that I stop letting folk tell me what I can and cannot do. Y'all get mad with me because I always bring it back to Jesus. What somebody said the other day, we trying to talk about police brutality, you bringing God in. Let me tell you what my dad told me one time. My dad was, he was a brilliant man. You know, that's what I'm supposed to say was my dad, right? But he was a brilliant man. He was a historian, he knew a whole lot of stuff. Very wise man, one of the wisest men I ever knew. And my father and I would sit down and talk sometime. And he'd talk about the history, he'd talk about the depression, he'd talk about all kinds of stuff. And then I, when we have debates and we talk about stuff, I said, well, the Bible said. And you know what he say to me? Let me tell you something, Jimmy. Don't bring the Bible into our discussions. Because we can't discuss nothing when you bring the Bible in. Because when you bring the Bible in, there ain't no argument. How can we carry on a discussion and you keep bringing God up? There ain't no question about God. God is it? I said, well, Dad, that's all I know. I don't care about what somebody else say. I'm telling you what God said. He said, but that can't help for our discussion. We need to leave God out of it. And you know, I'm glad he taught me that because that's what a lot of folk always tell me. I was on CNN this past week, you know, and I brought up Jesus. I said, you know what? Everybody talking about should they protest by taking a knee? Or should they not protest by taking in? I, I put a little thing out. I said, you know what? They got a right to protest anything they want to protest. But one thing I got a problem is, how come it's acceptable for them to take a knee to protest police brutality, but it ain't right to take a knee to praise Almighty God? <laughs> then somebody got the nerve to say, that ain't what we talking about. We talking about police brutality. Well, I'm talking about Jesus Christ and the reality that he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Folks get upset with me always bringing Jesus into a conversation. 
When we did Black Lives Matter, we did All Lives Matter, folk got mad. It's supposed to be all, but Black Lives Matter, that's what we're talking about. But I'm trying to say that whosoever believeth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. All lives matter to God. He didn't just come for black folk, but that ain't what we're talking about. We're talking about black folk. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm not going to get caught up in your reality when I'm caught up in the reality of Almighty God. I can't let you pull me down to your level. Now y'all need to understand, because get this through your mind, I'm talking now. I'm black, did y'all know that? <laughs> I might be a little light, but I'm still black. Got black grandbabies. You know, it's keep going on, I'm going to have, I'm going to have more black babies. But the bottom line is my blackness can't do a thing to give me victory unless the Lord build a house. They that labor, labor in vain. Unless I get the Lord in my situation, my situation ain't going to get no better. So we do not lose heart and lose our confidence because the world we see, you see, the world we see is a deception and illusion. From what we see, we should draw no conclusion. No matter what they say about you, there are too many folk that have made it when the world say you can't do it. You can talk about Daniel and the situation. They say, Daniel, stop praying. Daniel say, I ain't giving up God. And they say, we're going to put you in the lion's den. He said, them lions just an illusion. <laughs> oh, we're going to see what a real illusion they are. We're going to put you in there. That night he put, they put him in there. God turned the lions into vegetarians. <laughs> lions lost their identity. <laughs> They're looking for some salad and they put, what they doing? We need some salad and they done brought us some meat. <laughs> See, God can speak and change the lion. And then when they took Daniel out, God said, okay, now y'all become carnivorous, carnivorous, what's the word? <laughs> y'all become meat eaters again. <laughs> and you know what happened? Those folk that tried to get Daniel, they got ate up because there was a new reality. The real reality. See, the real reality is what God says. The real reality is not what we say, it's what God says. It ain't what the devil says. So whose report are you going to believe? You better learn to believe the report of the Lord. Because all this is an illusion. God's word is our finality and the basis of our reality. Do you hear what I'm saying? God's word is our finality. See, the only reality we have is God's word. God's word ain't going to change. He said, I've said high above all the, earth, all the earth. I've said high above all of this, my word, and it will not change. He said in Isaiah 55, he said, what I say, it will be accomplished. It will come to pass and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. God said that when he sent his word, he put it in things. He put it in each one of us. And he said, we better go to Isaiah 55 for a moment. Let's go to Isaiah 55. Well, I said I wasn't going to go there because I didn't want to get you upset for repeating myself. But go to Isaiah 55, 11. Let me just say it. So is the word, Isaiah 55, 11. So is the word, my word, be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing. Now, I want you to think the thing. I am the thing that God has put his word in. So what does he say he's going to do with the thing that his word is in? What does it say to you? Do you see the word prosper? He's going to put his word, it shall prosper in the thing. I am the thing. You say, well, where do you get that from? I am the thing that meditates on his word both day and night. I am the thing that is like a tree that is planted by the waters. I am the thing whose leaf does not wither. I am the thing that in everything I set my hand to will prosper because God put his word in the thing that will cause it to prosper for what he sent it for. 
I am in a different reality than everyone else around here. And so are y'all when you open up your eyes and stop letting the illusion of the devil of what you think is reality and understand this ain't reality. This is not reality. Ask Moses. <gasps> Pharaoh coming. He come. He coming with all them soldiers. That's a reality. Yeah. <gasps> There's some water out here. We can't get through. We about to die. That's our reality. <gasps> God said, you think that's reality? Moses, let me show you reality. Lift up your stick. And water that was blocking the way, all of a sudden showed the real reality. Just like this owl is parted on both sides, Moses lifted up his staff and the children of Israel walked through reality and through the illusion of water that was blind. See, some of y'all got illusions in your life that you feel like you can't get past. What you got to learn is there's an almighty God that has a word to speak over your life. You have an illusion that you can't succeed. You got an illusion making you believe you're not going to be successful. But God said you prosper in everything when my word is in you. You've got to learn you are more than a conqueror. You've got to learn that God has called you out for a purpose. He got a plan for you. He wants to give you hope, wants to give you a future. You've got to stop letting the word of the world block you from the word of God. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Moses told us enough about reality. Moses told us about reality. That a rock, dry rock, can speak to the rock and the rock can pour forth water? How you think that? That's my reality. Because my reality is almighty God. And there is nothing too hard for him, nothing impossible for him. Once you get that mindset, then you realize all this stuff is an illusion. This is what the devil has created for you to believe that you ain't nothing. Every one of you in here needs to start taking the authority of the word of God and begin with the simple thing. You know, you already got a little bit. Check it out. I'm going to church this morning. Look where you is. How you get here. You got in a car. And you drove in a car that got you over here faster than a horse could. Because somebody had a plan to think there was a better mode of transportation than a horse. They stopped looking at the illusion that only the horses were the way to get around. And they saw another way. Cause they tapped into Almighty God to give them an idea of an engine, automobile engine. God got plans for you people up in here, but you got to stop letting the world blind you with the illusion of who you are. You got to realize the reality of who you are in Christ Jesus. Are y'all hearing me? You know, you want to know why I'm crazy like I am? Because I'm reading this word and I'm believing my God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above whatever I can come up with. If I can begin to believe that God can deliver me from every peril, every situation, and I can look at the Bible and see how he delivered Daniel, how he delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Begin, and Abednego, how he delivered everyone, I know he can deliver me. And why I'm going to let you look at you and your mediocrity and start believing I can't do nothing because you can't do nothing. I ain't going to let the lie of your life mess up my life. When I know God ain't no respect of persons. If he did it for Daniel, if he did it for Moses, if he did it for Joshua, if he did it for David, he'll do it for me. My reality is what Almighty God says about me, not what you say. And I can't let you begin to dictate to me what I will do and what I will not do. I want to get you fired up. I want to get you fired up to realize that when you get fired up, fire ain't going to hurt you. The fire just going to light you up. 
And when the fire lights you up, you ain't going to be able to sit down. You're going to hear somebody say something that ain't truth. And one day, you're going to say, wait a minute, I can't stand that no more. And they're going to say, you better shut up. They're going to look at you crazy. You know what? I can't stand that no more. You better shut up. Sit down. Don't you say nothing. Hold on. Mm -mm. No, I can't sit down. You know what's going on? I see, it's something burning on the inside of me. It's something telling me that I am more than what everybody else want to say about me. Something else telling me I can't sit down when I need to stand up for Jesus. And when I stand up for Jesus, I realize that God gave me words in my mouth that I'm to speak. That he said, don't you worry about what you're going to say. You just put yourself in the right place and I will give you the words to speak. We'll talk about Jeremiah. I'm too young. I can't. You don't need to say that. He say, I am. Oh, I love that I am thing. That I am thing. Y'all, y'all see y'all in the illusion of what you see and what you have seen. I am in the reality of the what I just said. You didn't hear that, did you? I said I am in the reality of what I just said. What did I just say? <laughs> you better realize who run this world around here. See what I call, the Bible say, all I got to do is call on the name of the Lord. You call on the name. See, some of y'all ain't called. Y'all ain't called on the name. You called on the name. Oh, you say, give me this, give me this, give me this. I need my, oh, uh, uh, Uncle George Washington. Oh, my Mr. Grant. Oh, who else? All the other ones. You calling them when you need to call on Jesus. I'm sorry. Let me say. And then he goes, let me go back to 2 Corinthians 4 chapter. And we go back over there in 17 verse. He talked about we don't lose faith. We don't lose sight of the, of the confidence that we have. And here come God saying this. For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment. Now, y'all know that's a lie, don't you? God don't understand the reality of what we go through down here, do we? How can he call it light? You see, here's it light because no matter what burden you carry in this morning, it ain't too heavy for you. Yeah, that's fine thing for you to say, you don't know what hell I'm going to. No, I don't. But guess what? God does. And you know what God said? No temptation, no trial has come upon you except that which is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear. See, too many of us are sitting up talking about my problem. We want to talk about the, the illusion and say this illusion got me down. This illusion got my family in trouble. This illusion done it. But do you not realize the scriptures say that God has provided a way out? Yeah. Why? In the devil. Come on, man. Are you talking about an illusion when God provided a reality of the way out. You need to start looking for the reality of the word of God that lets you take command over the situation in your life. You still don't get the message. You think death is final? I just explained it to you a minute ago. But see, there are some folk thought death was final, so they thought they killed Jesus. They were suffering under a disillusionment. And when folk try to hold you down, they're suffering under disillusionment too. When you realize that this world is an illusion, that you are children of the King, of Almighty God, they took Jesus and they hung him up on a cross to kill him and they did and he died and when he died on the cross all of his disciples with the exception of one suffered under illusion of disillusion they felt like he was dead but even death can't hold a child of God I heard Jesus say I am the way 
the truth and the life. He say, I am the resurrection. Man. And you need to understand, he said, that even if somebody lives, if he die, he still should live. And if the dead, he already dead, when he hear my voice, my words, he shall get up. And so Jesus died, died, died on the cross. But on the third day, woo, Jesus, I said, what? Let me repeat myself one more time. I said, they thought he was dead. They put the rock in front of the grave, but they were suffering under an illusion. See, God's reality say, you take my word, my word in you, my word can put you down if you want to, but my word will get you up. So on now. On the third day, <laughs> he got up, and nobody believed it because they were suffering under the illusion that reality is what they see. Reality is not what you see. Reality is what God says. So if the doctor say you got cancer, but God say you shall live, you shall live, you got to realize whatever God say is the final authority. But we got to be bold enough to begin to proclaim what God says in the midst of a world that's trying to say a bunch of other things. We got to watch out for the distractions and we got to bring Jesus into every situation. Don't let them put you down into an illusion. You bring the reality so that you get the final conclusion of who God is. Are y'all understand? Some folks say, well, I ain't good enough. The day Jesus died was another man who was a thief, who sure enough was a thief. And what he had done, he had robbed. So they crucified him. And they tied his hands and nailed him to the cross. They nailed his feet to the cross. But this thief had a different plan. He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. His words changed the dynamics of his situation. He was on the cross about to die. And Jesus said, son, this day, this day. Folks say, yeah, huh, this day he about to die. Because that was the illusion of what they thought was reality. You got to understand, if y'all ever saw the movie The Matrix, we living in a matrix. <laughs> Some of y'all don't mean not understand that stuff, but some of you do. The authority in this world is not mankind. The nations and the heathen rage against God, but he sits up on his throne, and he smiles, he laughs, he says, y'all ain't got no authority except I give it to you. So they took that thief and they kilted him. Past tense, real dead. But Jesus said this day, the day that he died, he would still live because God knew that life he gave is eternal. The life is in every one of you. You need to start living life. Jesus came that you might live it to abundance. If you ain't got it to abundance, you've been limiting yourself by the illusion of what you see in this world. This world can't harm us, folks. Oh, man. The world is not our home. There's so much more that I could say about this, and I let the time go too long. But I want us to understand that no trial has come upon us that can break us unless we lose the faith and begin to believe that the illusion is real. This is an illusion. I should say this. This is a test. It is nothing but a test. Do not attempt to adjust your television sets. This is a test. 
And now notice something about a movie. When you see the characters get murdered in the movie, are they dead? It's an illusion. We are in a movie and God is watching it. We are just the characters that are like on a stage. We think it's going to hurt us, but God is still in charge. This world, I got, I got to finish. I got, I got so much I want to do, but I get excited about I'm preaching and I shouldn't do that. You know, this world is an illusion. And these are light afflictions we have for the moment. But he goes on and ends it up right here. But it is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So the little trial we go through, it ain't about nothing. We got to learn to proclaim that Jesus is Lord of our life. Everything that's coming, it is just for a moment. Every trial came to pass. We are going to have a victory. We know that this shall happen by faith. So, I guess there's nothing else I can tell you about it right here except to tell you that when Elijah saw Elijah get carried away, do you remember the windows of heaven were open? And right alongside of Elijah were chariots, chariots of fire. He had to stop looking at the natural world and see it with a spiritual eye. Do you remember when Elisha's servant opened up his eyes, got up one morning, and there was a camp of enemy all around them? That was the illusion. Elisha came out and said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see that those that are against us, there are those that are for us that were all around those that were against them. I pray the Lord open up your eyes that you begin to see the reality of the illusion that you are limited in this life because there is no limitation to any member in this congregation who knows the Lord as their savior. Amen. Do you hear me, God in life? Yes. Let the confession be in your life. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. This world is simply an illusion to hinder me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. This world is simply an illusion to hinder me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So when I look at something in the world, it has been sent to hinder me. So while I think I'm being hindered, I need to realize that God's strength is perfected in my weakness. So when I think I'm being hindered, I'm really being strengthened. When I feel like folk are coming against me, God is building me. When I think folk are talking about me, God said no weapon form shall prosper. He said, in every tongue that rises up in the condemnation of me, I shall condemn. No weapon, no situation, no trial, no tribulation, nothing can stop me. When I realize who God has created me to be, I'm not afraid of the arrow that might fly or the pestilence that comes at night because I've learned to dwell in the shelter of the Most High. That's my reality. For Jesus is my Lord, he is my God. He said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. He said, if you need me, you just call me. Just call me and I'll be there. You better know this, there ain't no mountain high Ain't no valley wide that's going to keep him, keep him from getting to me. See, I know my reality is based upon his eternity. 
I'm not afraid of what man might do to me because I know what God has done for me. Hallelujah. And I'm trying to get you all to recognize this. You need to be standing up saying, I am a child of the king. I have been anointed with the word of God, the spirit of God, to shatter every yoke in my life. I know who I am. I know what I believe. And I know my God is able to deliver me in the storms, in the fire, in the water, from the high places, from the low places. I know my God is able. That's what we all need to be proclaiming. And let not the world put a limitation with its illusion. He always causes us to triumph. So when I open my eyes and I see a roadblock, God will move it out the way. When I open up my eyes and I see trouble on every hand, I need to open up my eyes and see angels all around. 